And in these groups, you are able to encourage each other and then act on it? Yes, but you're also able to identify that there were social forces that were acting on you mm -hmm. to suppress that, that it wasn't just a matter of you and your personal choices, right. that you were being conditioned and being raised to believe things, and the society was conditioning everyone to believe certain things, and that it wasn't even just a matter of my deciding, oh, I'll be an artist. Uh, it was more a matter of saying, we have to challenge these norms or mm -hmm. there's no space in the society for any woman to be an artist. I was in a workshop recently where you talked about mm -hmm. norms and uh -huh. really to mindfully take a, a, a moment and look at whatever group you're in, whatever organization, and consider what the norms are because when we're in that environment, it's, it's not even necessarily on our radar. A, that yeah. a norm is a norm. Can you help us identify how someone could go through that process of, of seeing what they don't see? Uh -huh. One of the times we become most aware of norms is when someone violates a norm. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone who comes into a group or you're working with somebody who's making you uncomfortable uh, or you're thinking this person just doesn't get with the program, it might be worth taking a step back and saying, wait a minute, are there norms this person is violating mm -hmm. that we might not even be aware of? And are these norms actually something that might be discriminating, you know, mm -hmm. that we should change? Or are these norms that we actually value uh, that we want to make explicit so that we can help people understand them? Mm -hmm.